Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the series premiere of Dexter New Blood, a great series premiere. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So obviously, we're picking up with Dexter 10 years-ish into this new life he's been living. A lot of interesting things immediately, going from somewhere like Florida, in particular Miami, uh, to uh, somewhere cold. It's kind of interesting. Two, I do. Lo I knew this was the case because of the previews, uh, but I knew that Deborah would be the one that he's seeing. Um, I think I'd already heard that she was coming back to the show, but when, uh, to anyone that doesn't, because uh, I think I've talked about this recently, I'd never seen the original. I'd never seen the final season of Dexter until like I literally just finished it yesterday. Uh, but I already knew how it ended, at least like certain aspects, like Deb dying. I knew that already. Uh, no one's fault. Once again, it was years. I just never circled around to like the series, this final season, especially after finding out how they end it and how most people felt about the ending. I personally, now having seen it, I like the ending. I can, I guess, I can see where people's issues were with it, but still, I liked it. It's a sad ending, but uh, you know, regardless. Um, but tangents and all that aside. Um, but I do like, it. it's very, I think it's very, uh, important that it's Deb's the last, the person he sees now, because, well, first and foremost, uh, technically she was his last kill. I mean, obviously it was Daniel, but like, he took her off life support, like, you know, the thing, the thing to keep, stop her from breathing, and he dumped her in the bay, like, so, there's that. But also what she represents, like Harry left because it's like, right, you don't need me anymore. You are a different Dexter Morgan and like Deb represents that new Dexter Morgan. She's everything he wanted to be because of her. He wanted to be this new involved him where it's like, right, I don't need my kills. I don't need that. Like, you know, I found something more. And now it's just like, right, me being who I am got the last and only family, like well, other family I had left beside my son. I got my sister killed because of who and what I am. Um... So, I mean, he already felt like he had ruined her life. And just when things got better, like, every, everything was lost. Obviously, he lost Vogel. He lost her. So, it just, like, obviously, he had to send his own son away. So, what Deb represents to him in his mind, I, 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 I don't know. I think it's beautiful. Because even, like, he's having nightmares about, like, her, you know, her body coming up from the water on that little fishing uh, hole spot. Which she's like, no, I'm glad that you went before me. Because I, I couldn't imagine living in a world without you. Look at you. Ten years, um... Without a kill, like, I'm so happy for you. Because he can't even kill the animals. Which I even love the comment early on in the episode. It was like, oh. Like, the guy's like, yeah, I've killed animals or whatever. And Dexter's like, yeah, I haven't killed one since uh, I was a teenager. And you're like, ha ha. But, um, there's that. I also had a feeling, like, when Angela popped up and she's trying to pull him over. I'm like, is this some, like, freaky deaky stuff? Oh, it's you guys getting freaky deaky. Uh, I think that's so interesting. First and foremost, you're getting with a cop. So, that's interesting. And also, she's a mom, too, so that's doubly interesting, because you know that's going to make you feel all types of weird. One, it's a cop, considering who you are, considering not only you as a serial killer, but you with your previous profession as an um, analyst, like, you know. And also, too, like, her being a child, uh, parent, like, that, that wouldn't do anything to you as a parent, because you know your son's out there somewhere. I don't know. It just, I'm surprised that correlation would happen, so... But obviously seeing Dexter just living a regular life, like, hey, it's a small town, everybody knows everybody, but it's also the complicated thing of uh, he's meant to stick to a routine, and Matt in particular disrupts that routine on many different levels. You know, Deb is like, nah, just keep up with your routine, you're letting this guy get to you, because Dexter was like, I feel like I'm being watched, and he was. The moment that person came into town, I was like, that looks like that could be like a teenager, I'm like, teenager, early 20s or whatever, so I'm like, I was like, is that Harrison? I was like, because that's the only thing I like. Someone keeping an eye on Dexter is like, the only person who'd come looking for him like that would be Harrison. Now, I have some thoughts about that, which I'll, I'll go ahead and throw it out there. I don't know if that's actually Harrison. It might be, or it might be someone that killed Harrison and took his identity. I know I'm going buck wild with this. I'm curious to see what they do with the Hannah thing. Like, I'm sure we'll get an answer next episode, but I'm curious like whether or not it's going to be a thing of Hannah either died... Um, I hope, I hope it doesn't end up being, I hope they don't do something sad where they're like, yeah, like Hannah left me behind. It's like, it'd suck if she died because it's like, right. Um, 
just like, oh yeah, the woman you love that you entrusted with your son, like, you know, you weren't able to be there for her in all this time. Like, obviously, Harrison's going to have a lot of resentment because I doubt Hannah ever told... Um, well, that's also the question, too. Did Hannah ever tell Harrison about who his dad was? Probably just, like, focused on the... Because, I mean, she thought he was dead, too, so... I wonder what made Harrison decide to go looking for him now. Like, I, I wonder what changed. Like, because that's the thing of, like... Because whether or not it is Harrison, which I'm like, I know that's... A, I, once again, wild theory I'm just throwing out there. Just I thought, like, the real Harrison's dead and someone took his identity. That's what I was thinking. Like, some kid who's, like, lonely and messed up and trying to find the father figure. We'll, we'll see. Because it also depends on his responses. Like, if Dexter brings up, oh, so what about Hannah? Because Harrison hasn't brought up Hannah. So, if he brings up, so it's like, you know, if he brings up Hannah, maybe that'll change things. But I get the feeling next episode, Dexter's going to be the one that ends up bringing up Hannah. And just going to be like, right, you just have to respond off of that. I mean, I guess if you look into stuff enough, you'll kind of figure things out. Like, because... Uh, like, oh, Dexter has a son he hasn't seen, so you could feel that role. Once again, wild theory I'm throwing out that there the first episode. But um, I'm definitely curious. The, the thing I was kind of hoping, I was like, I hope it doesn't end up being like she left him behind or something. Because that would be heartbreaking. But I don't think she would do that. Especially with Dexter being gone and, like, you know, making the promise to look after her son for him. Like, for uh, look, look after her son for him. I, I, I don't see her Hannah doing that, but we'll see. Um... Obviously, you have Matt being the um, spoiled, rich douchebag coming in, doing whatever he wants. The moment he shows up, he's like, hey, I want to buy this gun because it's bigger than my buddy's gun. And Dexter's like, cool. Oh, wow. Uh, well, uh, there's a 24-hour hold. You'd have to wait to come back and get it tomorrow. And so he's like, oh, really? Like, come on. Like, you break the rules. You have a little more, more fun. And Dexter's just looking at him like, yeah, if you knew about me and the rules. So, no. Um, which I think there's layers to that too, because one, it's like, right, I need to abide by the rules. I'm, you know, this is my second chance, you know, I get to be Jim, uh, Lindsay, which I'm like, is that supposed to be like a reference to the author of the, um, I would assume that's what well, that's supposed to be a winked nod to the author of the, uh, books. Um, there's that, but also like rules coincide with the code. So I'm sure like, it's like, I'm, I'm sure there's like layers upon layers. I mean, I think that in itself is like the title of this series is layers upon layers. I mean, new blood because it's like, hey, it's a it's a new series. Um, two, first time he spilled blood in like ten years. Three, his son's back, so it's almost gonna be like, oh, will you teach your son everything that you were trying to teach Zach to be? Um, I think that's also. It makes you wonder what's that done on purpose, too. Like, the actor who plays Zach, like, and the actor who plays Harrison now, look, it's not the same, but there's a similarness to it, just with the dark hair and everything makes me go, like, was that done on purpose, too? Or is that just gonna be, like, a, no, like, maybe he dyed his hair, or just his hair just naturally, uh, went, I, I don't know. Once again, super could be overthinking that, but I just think that's fascinating. If that ends up being the case of just like, right, because Zach was the one that he was trying to like, he took an interest in. It. It's like, right, he saw a lot of himself in Zach and it's just like, hey, like you could be like the new, like I could teach you everything that was taught to me by Harry. But obviously because everything kind of threw him out of his routine, he's like, ah, like he kept making a joke around Angela and her um, daughter about like, hey, I, I can't get my tuna sandwich. It's because it's part of his routine and not getting his tuna sandwich at lunch. Like he needs every day to be the same because the routine, routine, routine keeps you in a certain pattern, keeps you from, you know, because even when he was hunting the animal, like he could, I wonder, was it? What was pulling him back from it? Like, right, not wanting to kill. Two, the fact is that he hasn't killed an animal in years. That the um, that it's always been well, the last animal he's killed was a were human. So like, maybe that angle to it like pulled him back from not wanting to. Because it's like, right, it won't be the same thing. Even if I kill this animal, or is it just because if I kill this animal, I'm gonna start backpedaling and I'm just gonna go full blown Bay Harbor butcher in this place? But yeah, once again, small town. Everyone knows everyone. Obviously, Matt ends up getting the gun like he wants to. I love that even Dexter was like, uh, could you get it, send it to him, Fred? I kind of don't want to go. But Fred's like, yeah, me me and Brian, we finally settled. We're, go we're picking up Garfield today. And it's like, yes, I uh, I, I lost the uh, the naming convention. So it's like, please do this for me. He's like, okay, sure. Um, 
which kind of sucks because Matt was inviting him to the party and stuff like that. Because I was like, I, I love that he was cracking. Like it's like he had he be he had to be such a snide asshole and was like, oh, uh, like uh, Dexter was making a wise crack about like, oh yeah, like having a bigger gun than him and just like you could tell it like bothered him. He's like, ah, this guy, this guy, this guy. Uh, always the rules. All those voice guys was like, ha ha ha, yeah. So had to show up at the party. I want. I was thinking at first the girl he was hooking up with. I thought it was going to be the girl who was um, who Angela helped. It's like, oh yeah, like here's some money to get some food, and like here's some more money, and like uh, go to talk to Desiree. There's a shelter nearby. Um, but um, when that happened, I thought that was going to. I, I thought that was who that was going to be. But no, it's someone else that um, Dexter knows. She's like, oh my god. I, he's like, hey Becca, uh, if you leave the right now, I won't tell your dad about it. Um, but uh, Matt's just so happy to get the gun. But also his buddy Bill ends up being a wreck because it's like, right, I took the fall for that boat crash because we found out about that early in the episode when they ran his ran his background and everything. Well, the police at the police station they did. Um, but then it turns out Bill was the one who took the fall for it, but Matt's the one that was behind the wheel. He was playing chicken with the guy. The guy yielded, but, uh, Matt hated the guy because, like, a deal went sideways and he crashed into the guy. I'm assuming it has to deal with his dad. Like, I guess when the deal went sideways, his dad blamed him, and so Matt took it out on this guy. Uh, you know, it's like the rich and powerful. It's like, right, his dad was behind it, too, so his dad made it all... You know, disappear. He made all of Matt's problems disappear because obviously it's like, well, he's going to protect the son, but also anything Matt does reflects badly upon him. And I think he tries to present himself as like a kind person because he's like, hey, um, his business is there doing stuff because like people rallied out being like, hey, uh, stop the drilling, uh, save the planet. So um, he's the type of person that you know. And I'm also, I think, I feel like they're already setting it up because, like, um, Angela's daughter in particular, like, he was offering everyone cocoa. She in particular poured it out, and he looked at her, and I'm like, that's probably going to be a through line of, like, that's going to come back full circle later on of, like, him having, well, there's probably going to be, like, beef between them. Because her in particular, she's probably, like, going to uh, be the one that kind of, like, rallies the troops against him, and he's super probably, well, not probably, he's super not going to appreciate it, and that's probably going to get her in his crosshairs because there is this background element already where there's like been missing women so I'm wondering is he associated with that because like they threw that out there earlier on because there was some guy that was there talking to Angela about it but it was like right there's these missing women like their bodies haven't been found so nothing can really be done no crime has officially happened they're just missing no crime has happened until they their until one of the bodies actually shows up so I'm wondering, is that going to correlate in some shape or form? Uh, well, jumping at, like around, obviously, like, well, because Dexter visu like visualized about like taking a gun and bashing Matt in the face. But it's like, yep, enjoy your gun, takes off. But when the time comes, um, he's in the woods. And rather than killing the animal, he actually reaches out to it and he starts petting it. And it's just this beautiful, elegant creature in front of him. And I think that speaks volumes about, like, the nature of who he was at that moment. Of like, right, this animal isn't scared of me. It's like, at this moment, we're connecting because animals are very intuitive to a person. So, like, if it's accepting him right now, it's like, right, that darkness in you isn't there. But, you know, obviously Matt had to be the douchebag and kill it. And so Dexter bashes him in the face with the gun like he was thinking about before. It's like, oh, yeah, she went through with it this time. And at first he picks up the knife and I was like, oh, you're not going to do it. What are you going to do? Call Angela and be like, right, he almost shot me. I'm sorry. I bashed him in the face. I thought Dexter might do that. But he's like, right, first rule of the code. And I love it because that's intuitive because, yes, there's the whole like representation of De uh, Deb like, you know, with uh, Harry, but that's the point where he starts talking inside. We get his, like, inner monologues. You know, it's been so long since I saw Dexter, I never correlated that when I was watching you. That that very similar thing. It never crossed my mind because now I'm like, oh, wow, interesting. Because, uh, well, I, I won't spoil the most recent season of you in certain regards, but I was like, once I saw the where Dexter was going, I was like, huh, interesting, just 
I'll, I'll leave it at that. Like the original final season, like I went to where it was heading. I was like, is that where that's going to go? Interesting. I never, I didn't have the context to talk about that during you, but yeah. And you know, once again, I don't, I don't want to spoil anything to anyone that's curious about watching it and hasn't watched it yet, or it's part way through it. Regardless, um, which is just, there's a lot of parallels that I just, I guess because like Dexter wasn't in my mind at the time, like because it'd been so long at that point in time since I've seen it. Because once again, I I only saw like the half of the first episode of the final season, but um, so like I didn't, it didn't correlate in my head when the um when I started watching you of just like oh yeah the parallels there. Uh, different beast animals all together, Dexter and Joe. Uh, but regardless, tangents and all that aside. Uh, but I, and the moment he's like, but right, he's talking inside of his head. He's like, right, he's kind of, oh yeah, slipping back into it. He's like, cover your tracks. He slits the animal's throat, let its blood run over to where Matt is. I guess the point is like, if there's any blood residue there... I mean, I guess it's just all going to be like, oh, that that animal gets found later on. It's going to look like Matt did it because it was from his knife, the knife that he bought at the store. Uh, but I also thought it was like, right, because maybe any blood of Matt's might be on the ground, so the animal blood will mix with it and potentially taint it. I thought that was another aspect of it, but it's like, right, don't get caught. He uh, He's like, yeah, I've been out of practice a little bit, but uh, didn't take him long to snap that. And I, I think it speaks volumes. Deb didn't pop up then. Deb doesn't pop up until later, until after the kill. But I'm like, it's so interesting that Deb didn't have anything to say about it. Yo, you're so proud of him. But then, like, the moment he's like, yeah. Like, it's like, oh, my God. Like, because Matt's, like, figuring out. He's like, wait, you were a serial killer. He's like, yeah, I was. He's like, well, truth be told, I, I am. I always will be. It's it's in me. Um, but he's like, oh, I know what you are. And it's like, you know... You what you did, and obviously he's talking from the personal experience. He's like, it's not my fault. Uh, it's my, you know, my mom died when I was eight. My dad wasn't really there for me. I just, I was kind of all screwed up. Which I was like, is this going to hit Dexter a certain way? It's like, well, I, you can't even compare Matt. To, I was about to say like, there's a little bit of a parallel you can compare between Matt and Zach, but it's a little bit of a different uh, beast entirely but uh like because the moment dexter found out about the whole ohio situation about the boat it was just like come on I, damn these kids like come on like why are you making this so easy like you're bringing me someone that would be my perfect victim like you like that this would be my normal targets like why are you literally like it was a layup it was like oh this he's a douchebag he's falling into my lap plus i don't trust the sob with the gun like I thought he was going to do something a lot more dangerous because of that gun. I thought, like, hey, maybe Bill was going to get it or something like that. Like, in the sense of, like, he was going to kill Bill. I just, I didn't trust the Matt dude from the very beginning. But, uh, all, luckily, all he did was kill an animal. Um, unfortunately, he did it in front of the wrong person. I, mean, I even love that Dexter snapping, like, you almost killed me. I wonder, does that rub him the wrong way? Because it's, like, right after everything that's happened, like, I can't die like this because i need to live and remember everything i've done but um regardless it doesn't change the fact because it's him trying to pass blame it's like yes your childhood might have been screwed up you know dexter talks about his childhood being screwed up the way it was and it's like yeah but i had a harry and he was like who's harry uh he's the father who adopted me and he's like see you know what i'm going to yeah but it's like the difference between us is at least like Dexter is aware of his situation. It's like you're not self-aware enough to recognize like the personal responsibility you need to and have to take for your own actions. But uh, he goes into daddy's little point when he's like, my daddy will destroy you if, if, if you do anything to me. And it's like, oh, well, there's no going back now and ends up killing Matt and ooh, slicing and dicing. And because he did do his ritual of the glass, but he was like, I don't need trophies anymore. I'm an evolve. I'm an evolving monster. I was like, ooh. I love that. I mean, because also those uh those trophies came to bite you in the ass quite a bit, so no point in keeping those. But he also doesn't need that reminder for the kill. I, I'm curious, like, what this means going forward. What this what this new monster of who he is. I mean, because I, obviously he killed technically twice after like letting daniel live like after changing and becoming like you know he was, he was already evolving into the new dexter but at the end but then like he had to kill he killed daniel making a, a self-defense and then he killed 
Deb. Like, once again, that's kind of always kind of like on, in a quotes type of thing. Um, because it's kind of a technicality, asterisk beside her name, but I think still to him, it's like she was still his final kill, technically. I wonder what does he view it as that way. I mean, it's not the same, but still. And then, but, um, so there's that. But then there's also the element of, like, once again, Harrison getting into Dexter's place early in the episode, and he wants to get close to him, but then Deb is like, don't. Everyone that gets close to you dies. Dokes, La Guerta. And then lifts up her shirt and pulls out the bullet. Me. And then I like in the background, you can see like the blood pulling around Harrison's chest being like, yes, he will die too. And so Dexter's like, yeah, I don't know you. Uh, there's a shelter nearby. You, here's some money for like a bus uh, for tomorrow. So Dexter won it. But Dexter also is like, no, I'm not. I, at least I can alleviate one lie. And so he admits to Harrison who he is. He's like, come home, please. And so they go back to his cabin. And he's like, what Harry did for me, I will do for my son. Like once again, like whether it's like fully teaching him the code because is Harrison like him? Maybe not. Um, I'm also wondering, is this going to be one of those things of, once again, it's always the thing I go back to in this regard. It makes me think of uh, Mr. Brooks with Kevin Costner. Um, it ended up not being the ending, but like they kind of tease, oh, potentially this could be an ending. Like his daughter, um, who I always have to remind myself was played by Daniela uh, Panabaker. I always have to remember that. Um, kills him at the end but he wakes up and it was a nightmare i'm wondering are we going to get that with this is it going to be like harrison's going to try and kill him or maybe he's going to uh i mean hell dexter's already had i mean dexter already had to kill his brother so wouldn't be too well and technically his sister too but it's like wouldn't be too surprising at the end of it all he had to kill um his um own son for whatever reason i hope not because that'd probably break him in a way but i'm like i don't know but it might be like, oh, fa the new father-son business might be kind of what that ends up modeling after. I, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see uh, where things kind of go from there. But I'm curious to see how he handles that going forward. Is he going to, like, especially with your girlfriend, like, you know, things are different now. You've killed someone. Uh, you're not going to be the regular gym that everyone does. Like, you're going back to wearing your mask again. Which is so interesting because as, as Dexter, Dexter Morgan, he realized, like, right, at the very end, he was like, all of this, everyone around him, uh, Jamie, uh, Vince, uh, Angel, uh, Joey, it's like, it was no longer pretend. They were no longer just the mask he had to wear. He actually legitimately started caring about them. So this life was always more of a mask. This one became more of a mask, too. So that's why I'm curious. I'm also curious, too, like, because they did decide to make it. So, like, yeah, we are, like, keeping with the time frame of, like, yeah, it's been about 10 years since the... Um, a little over 10 years since the uh, original series ended and everything that um, well the thing I was wondering is because like yeah he's lived this life for as long as we followed his story in Dexter like you know from season 1 to season 8 like obviously we're like still in that time frame of just like how much time passed in we're getting that time frame now because I don't I'm sh there was a lot of time skipping around between seasons I'm sure I just don't I'm sure I'm trying to remember I'm sure some seasons definitely picked up immediately after others and others took place a couple months later type of situation you know so it's not an exact one-to-one -one of like the point I was making is like the original series like oh took place over a couple years that I was kind of thinking like right that that time has been like skipped in this one like right a life lived and cemented and I mean I guess the, the point is like when we join when we get introduced to Dexter he was already living that life anyway we jump into that point of his story so the same thing it is so it's just they're keeping thematically with that i didn't explain that well i actually explained it horribly but i'm just i'm, I'm really curious to see uh what's in store for us uh i did see the trailer a while back but i actually don't remember much of it uh but once again, you could still watch it without even having the context of the final season. Obviously, some of it probably would hit a little differently. Once again, the depth thing, I already went into it knowing at that point when I saw the trailer. I was like, oh yeah, but I didn't. Like, once again, I heard years ago that Deborah dies in like the final episode. So, regardless, uh, I'm, I'm very excited to see what ends up happening as uh, both uh, Dexter Morgan and Jim's life kind of end up colliding. And uh, living in two worlds was already an issue for him near the end of the original series, so can he handle it now because he is an evolving monster? We shall see. 
I should also point out, and I think it's very uh, befitting that at the very end they're playing the original um, ending theme music like that too. I was like, oh, that's that's nice. I was like, okay. I'm curious to see like whether or not they bring back. Probably not. Like I doubt they're gonna do like the same. Like I think the intro we got with just the title card is probably all we're gonna get. There's probably not gonna be an opening like in the original show. Um, at least for this season, if they decide to go more than just this, I don't, cause I think it's unclear whether or not this is just all, maybe it is already out there. I just, I was unclear whether or not this is going to be a full thing or whether it's going to be a limited series. I was on, I remember them talking about it being a limited series. So this might be a one-off. So it might not be a like opening theme, but just like the ending theme. Just, I thought that was kind of a nice touch, but, uh, regardless, uh, that's really all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, low light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.